This is the Reflector Reflections podcast. My name is Annie. Join me as we revisit with our guests who have been on their journey over this past year and connect to them to see where they're at now and how they're going. Today's beautiful conversation is with Sally. Sally is on as a five one reflector and was on episode 15. Now, Sally, I know you've been up to quite a lot, so I've been really looking forward to this. Welcome and share with us. Thank you. Yes. Oh my gosh. Life. Like I said, life happens. And I, you know, I've <clears throat> over the last year, I've really grown an Instagram page. I actually listened to the recording a couple days ago because I was like, where was I when this happened? What was it? And I think a week before we started talking, a week before we talked, I had this Instagram page and it grew and it was wonderful and amazing. And then I just realized like how silly <laughs> I was like listening to. It. I was like, you're so wise and so cute and so naive. <laughs> And now a year later, I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. So much changes for reflectors. So much changes every month, every year. So there's a lot. I'm I'm trying to even think. I So I graduated from MBA, um, which was a huge feat. And I also like actually don't really talk to any MBA people anymore because I was deconditioning during that time. So I'm not even the person that I was that went in. Um, I got married a month ago, so what? it's really exciting. No, that congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I actually haven't really told anybody yet. <laughs> In true, like, first-line fashion, I'm like, I'm going to keep this to myself, but it feels like a good time to talk about it. Um, so I got married, we moved across the country, started a new job, and yeah, all of the things in between. So there's been a lot. <laughs> yeah, back, back up the bus, back up the bus. <laughs> right. So when we chatted last time, yep, you were you were just kind of really starting to experiment. And that's how that page started where you were really focusing on the gates and you were publicly putting it out there with, with which a lot of reflectors were just devouring it because it's like, wow, this is somebody actually stepping into this. Mm -hmm. And I look at you now from where you were, cause you were still very shy about putting your face out there. And uh, you, you know, it, it was just like, but you have grown so much and that has been a wealth of wisdom and if anything, it's been huge inspiration to people to be oh. able to track their transit like that, to track how they're going. So married. Yes. Okay. <laughs> As I said, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. And you moved because you were in the country. So yeah. where are you now? Um, so my partner and I had been for long distance for three years, but we'd been together for over five now total. And he was in New York and I was in Michigan for graduate school. Um, and we moved to the Pacific Northwest. So he literally across like opposite ends of the country. Um, we did the full road trip, like six day road trip with all of our stuff, like stopped in New York, stopped in Michigan, and then headed all the way across. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild year. <laughs> that is incredible. And during our chat, I'm not sure if we got into it on air or off air, you might remember, but mm -hmm. You were speaking about that, that long distance relationship that you had. And sometimes it could be quite challenging because you were living in a small apartment back then and, and how you're kind of under each other's feet. Yeah. How is that going for you? <laughs> you know, what's funny is I have a job where I travel every week, like Monday to Thursday. So it's still essentially long distance, but that's, I think I look back now and that's the reason why I'm so deeply into my experiment just like two and a half years in is because I lived by myself. Most people already have a family or already have a partner or have roommates. So they don't get the opportunity to just be in their own aura 24 seven. And even now that I'm married, I'm still in my own aura four out of seven days of the week. So it just, in when I'm home, we each have like separate spaces. So I don't necessarily, I'm going to be honest about this, which might make some people mad, but it is what it is. When I'm home, I, we share a bed together because we don't have the capacity right now to not sleep in the same bed, but we do have like small spaces. I'm currently in my like little space that I can go to when I need space. Cave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And he has one. So we still have a lot of alone time because if I'm not traveling, I'm working from home. So he's in his office, I'm in my little office and it, it works out, but I am very grateful for it sounds weird to say as a married person, I'm very grateful for the travel and the distance, but it really does allow me to continue in my experiment and experiment in a different way. Like, oh yeah, when I sleep alone, I do sleep so much better <laughs> and I love him and I miss him, but like, it's true. It's true. And it just gives me that perspective and that added insight. So I love yeah. that that's all worked out for you that way, because 
again, if you've had, you've had a lot of this time to yourself, as you say, like, you know, you've been able to nurture who you are and really grow who you are and, and know how your energy feels. So knowing that you need that. And I just have to say there <laughs> about making people angry about sleeping together. I sleep with my partner still all the time. And I don't think there's hard and fast rules. I think we need to like ditch that, that crap. You still get your space. I still get my space because we sleep different times. Yeah. I just think you've got to do what works for you. And yeah. But and it's all about the awareness, right? Like I'm not saying my way is perfect or going to work for everyone else, but it works for me and I'm learning through it. Like I'm paying attention. I'm gaining that awareness. And that's, that's important. That's why we're here supposedly. So <laughs> yeah. I love it. So are you still working in the space that you were working in? So are you still doing a lot of that corporate business I am. Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, I rather than I have a really cool job. So rather than coaching teams, I'm actually building them. Like I interview and build and train teams now. And then I essentially, I essentially start them and then hand them off once they're like in their routines. And once they're good to go, I hand them off. And so that's part of the reason why I travel is I go to these places to help build the team, meet the team, support the team. And then I hand them off. So it's the same thing, a different environment, a different company, but it still brings me so much joy. And I think, you know, part of our conversation last time, I think included like this aspect of what I was doing before was so painful because I didn't have any like managerial here's like opportunity to be like we need to act this way and now I am the manager and I'm like okay so you actually have to listen to me like you have to do what I say it's not just about me providing an opinion it's like I get to tell you yes or no and it's you got to be careful about it right it's a fine line but as a reflector of um how much you insert yourself into community and act like the police um so it's, it's always a fine balance but it's nice to be on the other side that was the whole goal <laughs> uh, and I love especially being a five one that you now can literally not get overly projected on because you're built it. You're out of there. It's like, <laughs> yes. there's a win-win right there. I'm just thinking, wow, you've just hit the jackpot. You can build <laughs> it, dream. use all of your spidey senses, yeah. build it well, and then just go, I'll see you later. Yeah. And before anybody comes at you with a pitchfork. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yeah. And I think for me too, it's been really fascinating watching my markets environment come come out because my market, I'm a markets internal environment. So the language around markets in general, be out with the people or work from home. And also as a reflector that needs to sample, I do, I go out and sample. I'm literally like in the next month, I'm going to Nashville. I'm going to Colorado. I'm going to Salt Lake City. I'm going to South Dakota. I just came back from Indiana. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm going all these places. Um, but then I get to come home to my environment and thinking about, oh, I'm going to sample, I'm going to sample, I'm going to sample. And then I'm going to come home and I'm going to integrate and I'm going to be in my own space. And it's just, it, it's worked out better than I ever, ever could have thought it would to be totally honest. Yeah. I'm so happy. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Now you've also this year, besides obviously doing your own personal journey, you've been getting into the space of going to some retreats and really, you know, being in other aura energy. Yeah. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah. <laughs> like, where do I even start? <laughs> um, I think here's what I'll say. I I think everybody comes into the human design community and they're like, we're saved. We're going to meet people that fully understand us, fully accept us, fully acknowledge who we are. And that's not to say that that doesn't happen in the human design community, but I think um, people conflate that with everything is going to be perfect. And it's not. We're still people. We're still learning. Nobody is perfectly in their mechanics. Nobody ever will be. That is what transference is about, is like you are never going to be perfectly in your mechanics. And so for me, coming, going to the retreat, I was really on this like high of nobody respect respects reflectors and nobody understands us and nobody pays us and then coming after the conference I was like nobody understands anybody like a reflector or not it's really just humans trying to figure out humanity and can we and this is me like left angle cross of separation which is always about how do we love people better <laughs> like taking a step back like can we engage in all of the different spaces, human design or not, and have grace for the people on the other end because we're going to make mistakes. It's just who we are. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's one of the biggest takeaways I had from, from the conference, but I would be curious to hear 
you know, other thoughts or questions that you have as well. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's perfectly, it sums it up perfectly. We are just all humans and we can get, you know, we've all done it. We still do it to a degree. We kind of like isolate ourselves and going, oh, we're in our little reflector bubble and, and, you know, like, oh, my type, my type. And it's like, but we flow so much better when we're in space with people. Um, yeah. And I love just what you said there and about we're all just human. We're all just human yeah. having a human experience and reflector side or manifestor or any, any other type aside, we're all just trying to function <laughs> yeah. with our own life story. So, yeah, yeah. I really, really like that. Um, yeah. I've said it before. We are definitely wanting to bring some more retreats down here to Australia because I really feel yeah. the importance of that and not yeah. necessarily just reflectors, but yeah. what you, what you guys stepped into of being in aura. I love that. I just love that name. It just sends me, gives me tingles. Because that's what it is. It's about having that, that space for each other and yeah. feeling, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think, you know, as a reflector without any fixed definition, it was wild. Like the way I physically felt other people and not in the sense of touching them, but just being in aura. Like I felt somebody sacral or I felt like the defined head. I felt all of these things sampled it. Um, and then still, you know, we take all of that back and we like reflectors, we learn from it over time. And so it's definitely been a process. I'm still processing <laughs> most of it, um, trying to figure out and understand, but it's, it's a beautiful opportunity to see, Oh, this is what it could be like. Like it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does feel different when everybody in the room is at least learning the same language, if not speaking the same language. Yeah. yeah. And I just, that just reminded me then brought to my attention, like that was um, something that you, you had, or as a gift that you had where you could really, you were really sensitive to sacral energy. Yes. I still am. <laughs> yeah. Has it, am has it amplified at all as you've. I I don't know if it's amplified or I'm just becoming more aware of it. That's the hard part. It's like, did this all right? Like a great example is getting migraines, which I've talked a little bit about on my page. My migraine started when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And I went through this really intensive, like medical testing process to find out what caused them and how to control them and all of this. But when I look at my chart holistically, it's like, I have three right arrows and I was in a very structured strategic educational system so were my migraines from that were my migraines from being around like defined heads all the time and not self and all this stuff right so I feel like with the sacral what I'm noticing or the questions that I have around it is like has it always been there and now I'm paying attention or is it a certain type of sacral like is it a manifesting generator is it an emotional generator like is it a certain combination that's making me sick right and some of these questions I might never have the answer to but at least I know so that when I go into spaces I can say okay I need a break now <laughs> I need to step yeah. away and be by myself so my body can can regulate and do what it needs to do but it's it's wild to think that like literally someone just standing next to me makes me seasick and we're like in the middle of a desert <laughs> yeah. you know yeah yeah oh well I look forward to watching your space to see how you navigate that because I'm you. sure others have that I, I, I'm very sensitive to define heads yeah um, not so much not what you experience with the sacral but very much boom. yeah yeah it's 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 wild and I don't know for you if you notice the difference between the moon or a person because that's also a question of like is it is it just natural or is it does it feel differently like what is the outcome of that you know there's so much for science like I, I sometimes get <laughs> And this is the, the our first lines coming out, which I know you will appreciate here. But I sometimes go, ooh, and I hypothesize, hypothesize. Wow, there's a word that blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> all of these things. And then I go, oh, but it's going to take me six months to track that. But then I get excited because I'm like, data, data. <laughs> yeah. And I love wow. experimenting in that way of going, oh, I, I, I'm thinking this way. I wonder if that's, you know, what you're experiencing there with different generator types I love it yeah. <laughs> well and isn't it funny too I um so I've actually been studying with three different reflectors that have all been since the conference I like sought them out they've all been in their experiment for more than 15 years and it's interesting looking at them and being like you're so calm cool and collected and they're like not even close right like this this whole question of like 
six months will help me understand or like tracking this will give me all the answers I want. <laughs> like no matter what, we will never have all the answers, but it's beautiful being seen and it's beautiful having people wanting to witness and like journey with you in their own seeing and seeing you seeing and like all of all of the circle of things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that is so true. It is just about enjoying the ride and feeling into it all, feeling yeah. into us. But it's still fun for science. <laughs> it's still it's fun. It's My still fun to find a new hyper focus, for lack of better words. <laughs> it's like hyper focus on on steroids. It's uh, yes. And then you'll get bored with it and it'll be like, yeah, no, I forgot. I forgot that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this has been so wonderful catching up with you. Now, again, I'm just going to ask you the question. Yeah. And hopefully you can give some insight. New reflectors coming in. They are sprouting. I, I, maybe I'm just more in this space, but I think it's becoming a lot more popular. I know it's a lot more popular in yeah. where you are in the States opposed to here, but it's more and more people are coming out about it. Yeah. New reflectors. What's yeah. some advice that you've got for them? Oh, I have so many thoughts on this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the first... So I have, I have recommendations for reflectors and recommendations for non-reflectors. Um, the first recommendation for a reflector is, I don't care if it's phases of the moon. I don't care if it's like astrology houses of the moon. I don't care if it's like lunar gates from human design. Find a lunar calendar that is easy for you to follow for three months. Three months. That's what I ask because what I did, how I really got started is I took a look at the month previous, the current month and the future month. And even just looking at the cycles of what it went through, not even what I was feeling, but just like the gates and how it went through it, my mind was blown to find out things like, oh, the moon is in the spleen entirely for a week, you know, like things like that, that really can provide insight into your experience. So three months, just give me three months. Um, the second thing I would highly recommend finding a reflector to talk to. And I know that we are few and far between. We're not as far as we think. That's the surprising thing, right? Is like going on Facebook, you find these groups, you find these people. Um, but find a reflector to talk to as soon as possible because there's nothing like talking to your own type and being able to relate in that way. No one else can relate to us, right? And so it's, even though it won't be exactly the same experience, I'm sure you will find similarities or be able to ask each other questions and just, again, be in aura and see, like, what does this feel like compared to something else? Because so many of us, you know, look up our family charts and then I'm like, oh, I'm not like any of you. Like, it's totally different, right? And I think on that same coin, for non-reflector types, like, please connect your reflector to, like, a reflector that can teach them or guide them or sit with them. I think there are, looking back, it's so funny, was listening to that interview. And looking back, I definitely went through a moment of like frustration, thinking about the lack of information that I got in my first couple of readings. And like, again, still love Nadia, she's amazing. But there was nothing there to guide me, which is why I started that Instagram page in the first place. It was just paragraphs of like, this is what a reflector is. It told me nothing on how to search out the moon, on how to see what I'm feeling, on how to differentiate my emotions from somebody else's emotions. Like there was none of that. And so I think we just need to connect reflectors to reflectors as quickly as possible to be able to learn and really have an opportunity to figure out what the system is about from our eyes, not from what everybody else says it's like. Yeah. I love that. Such, <laughs> such beautiful advice. And that reflector map that we're building is coming. It's okay. coming. <laughs> Perfect. Can't wait. <laughs> It'd be beautiful to have that. As you say, that's really great advice. And I'm so yeah. grateful that, you know, I found just in my local community here, well, not local, you know, yeah. Southeast Queensland, just reflectors who I can talk to. And two of them are five ones. Oh, so that's having amazing. That, having that, fifth, you know, because we get each other. Um, yes. Not that we all don't get each other, but the, the the profiles are something that you feel a little bit more deeply into when you get into it. Yeah. You find yeah. that as well? Like even other five ones, other yeah, types? Yeah, I, I had a big, a big realization over the year because I got invited into like a HD business Facebook group that I'm not really on. But one of the reasons why I stepped back is because the person who was leading it reached out to me and said, hey, I'm making this post about reflectors in business is it true and in that moment I was like there's no way that what you're writing 
can be true for everybody. Like, like just as a human population, nothing is true for everybody. And I realized that assuming that type for type is exactly the same and it's gonna feel the same is like re-homogenizing us or reconditioning us to what's not true about our, ourselves because somebody else's version of calm, cool, collected is not my version of calm, cool, collected. And having people have that expectation sets all reflectors up for failure. And so I do, I strongly feel like five ones of any type can relate potentially more closely than a five two and a five one reflector because the processes and the lived experience are just so different from each yeah. other yeah. a second line will never understand the investigator first line in like a feeling sense right they can empathize with us and they can understand but they will never have that urge that we have yeah i love it yeah. it's so true oh we could talk about that forever <laughs> i totally agree yeah. Oh, I totally agree. Oh, that just like set my head spinning and I'm like, whoa, that's a, that's that's another conversation that I really want to have about that kind of stuff of just that, again, what exactly what you said about homogenization. And I'm like, let's, let's, let's exit out of that one or we just come in and light shit up. Like Destiny and I always joke about, we just go, oh, well, let's just say something that's really what controversial. We're here to do. What we're here to do. And then leave. <laughs> Yeah. really quickly like what your job does I just build it up and make a big thing and then I just set it on fire and off I go yes exactly. <laughs> oh thank you so very much Sally for being with us what's on the cards for you going forth in the future anything so um I have since changed a couple things about my page but you wouldn't know because I've been so quiet on it but new things are coming so I'm really excited I've kind of been resting and I feel the wave coming to like go out into the world so I'm excited <laughs> it's just like a hint I'm not gonna say what it is but I'm excited to see what happens next with that and yeah just feel free to reach out for anyone everyone like <laughs> if you have questions about reflectors I started the page because I wanted people to learn about reflectors and so that's what I'm going to keep doing <laughs> so I appreciate you doing that because we really do need it and really true honest sharing that comes from ex lived experience so thank you I appreciate you and I'm <laughs> I know that anybody who has watched all the work that you've done and sharing all of that um appreciates you as well because it's lived experience <laughs> I appreciate that and thank you for this it's great to be back <laughs> thank you Angel okay.